Have you or are you thinking about buying a sewing machine, but the thought of using it has held you back? Come along with me and I'll show you how to use it whilst also making a couch cushion quick and easy. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got Jessica with me. Hi. So um, Jessica contacted me back uh, a short while ago and asked me about sewing machines and she asked me which would be the best brand for her to buy. Uh, now that's an open-end question. It's just too big a uh, question to answer in one hit. So I suggested that we meet at Spotlight and look at their brands and what sewing machines they had for offer. To my surprise, they had uh, a special on with Elna. Now Elna's a really good brand, which is fantastic. It is computerized, it can do a number of tasks, but we're not 100% sure what it actually does in the sense of uh, making uh, buttonholes. So does it make an automatic buttonhole? Is this a walking foot? We just don't know. So if there's anything that Elna can do to improve on their packaging, is put more information on there. Um, it really would be helpful. Before we start, Jessica, I just wanted to ask you, um, what did you actually want this machine to do? Okay, so I wanted it, um, you know, for putting up hems, buttons, uh, making clothing, and basically to teach my children. Um, Great. Yeah. I'm glad you said that actually, because uh, one thing that's really lacking in our country uh, is uh, sewing. Um, I did my dressmaking course back in 85, 86, and uh, when I finished the course, uh, it was revealed to us that a lot of the manufacturing for clothes was gonna go offshore, and it did. The following year, 1987, it did. And I was not able to get into the industry, and hence why I moved into the building trade, which is something I knew as well as a kid. All right, so what we'll do now is unbox the, uh, the Elna and see what attachments it's got. And then we're gonna put it through its paces and see how good it can sew. And I'm expecting big things from this machine. Okay, beautiful. So this is the exciting bit. She looks very good. Look at that, that's a good size. I thought it was gonna be very tiny. Okay, I'll just take this box out of here. So then I plug this foot pedal. Uh, we'll put the power in. Switch the power on. I'll take this tray off. This tray will have all the bobbins and all the pieces, the pieces that we need. You open the legs on the tray and then you just slide that through. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through this packet which comes with the sewing machine and just go through all the things that you have. You've got two types of thread holders. So you've got one that goes sideways and it just fits in the side here like that and the thread just sits into this section. Okay, I personally prefer threads to aim upward, so I'm gonna use this one. So you also get an unpicker for those inevitable mistakes. You get a packet of needles, and they're number 14. You get a little brush to clean your machine. You've got your button foot. You've got your zipper foot. We also have a satin foot, a quarter inch seam foot, which is about six and a half millimeters. And then we've got the standard foot. Finally, a quilt foot, which I would refer to as a walking foot. This doesn't fit in automatically. You've actually got to take this screw off here manually. And then there's a little bracket here, the same as this unit. And you put the screw through the side here. And so it just sits in place. It also comes with uh, bobbins, three lots. So what you do, you place the bobbin onto, onto the bobbin winder and that currently is sitting on the left and for that to work you need to push it to the right. So what you do is first put it through the tensioner, run that across, do a couple of loops on top, then with your foot it will start winding and you let that wind. So that currently is on top speed and you can slow this sewing machine down so you can see there's a tortoise symbol and a rabbit symbol. So as the bobbin fills up, it'll hit this little uh, indicator here and it'll stop it when it touches that indicator. So it won't allow it to turn anymore. So you know that you've filled it enough. You now then push it back to the left and you take it off. All right, so to thread this machine, you put the thread in, you put the thread around the back 
metal guide, the silver guide. You then go to the front, loop it around the plastic as the diagram shows. You then go over the lever, put a bit of pressure on that thread to lock it in. You go down and you go to the bottom guide just above the needle. So then you pull down the automatic threader. You run your thread to the front of that, pull the threader up and it's done. Okay, so now to put the bobbin in, you pull on this little black lever here to the right. The plate pops out. It's got a diagram on there. And so you follow that diagram. And so the thread goes anti-clockwise. So then the bobbin goes into position. There's a little slither in the front. You place it over and run it to the side. Then put the plate back in. The thread's okay just sitting like that. Then you hold this thread, turn the wheel just slightly, not too much. You'll see a cord running on top of the bobbin through the clear plastic and then stop once it starts to come up. Then pull it between the foot and run it to the back and you're ready to sew. So whenever you're stitching, you need to do a back tack. Now the way you do a back tack is by pushing this button here. If you want your needle to start in an up position or a down position, you need to adjust it. So that's a down position, that's the up position. So you just choose which one you want. I usually start on an up position. Unless I need to hold the fabric in place and it's awkward, I then put the foot down and position my hands so I'm already in a down position. Now what I'm gonna do is do a quick sew of a fabric and just to show how this works. Now also there's a tensioner here it's set on number four, it can go up to number nine, I think. Yes, so it goes up to number nine and it starts from zero. Now, it's been set on four and I personally would keep it there. The tension is really important on the sewing machine. Um, you shouldn't play around with the tension unless you've got an issue with the fabric gathering or puckering on the back. Okay, so we're not gonna use the tray today. So I place everything in this casing and then just put the casing back so I have a bench to work on. So we're gonna use a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. You'll see it shows uh, 15. So 15 millimeters, 1.5 centimeters. Place the foot down. We back tack, so we stitch forward. Oops. So when sewing, it's really important that you hold the fabric firm I put my hand behind and I feed it through. Okay, so now I'm gonna get a very nervous Jessica to come and give this a go. Now as you get to the end, we will back tack. Stop, uh, a bit more. Bit more, bit more, stop there. Now, I'm gonna press the back tag button and I'm gonna go back again. Very good, Jessica. And so when we back tack it, uh, that actually locks the fabric in place. Okay, so now we're gonna make a buttonhole, see how this machine works. We're gonna first change the foot. So we pull the little lever, take the standard sewing foot off. Then we grab our buttonhole foot. You then place it in position, lock the foot in. Turn the thread to go into the machine. You want to take it back out and I want to get that thread inside the buttonhole foot. So we get our fabric, we place it in the position we need the buttonhole. Now the buttonhole will start at the lowest point and work upwards. So once we found our position, we drop the foot. We change the uh, configuration number to 17 because we're making a buttonhole. Okay. We drop the needle into the fabric. We hold the thread down the back. We then let it stitch. And we go the distance that we need for the button and then we push reverse. It goes back down. We stop at the same line as what we started. We push reverse again. And it will then zigzag all the way back up again. We stop it where we started, and then we press reverse one more time. And it's done. 
we snip all the threads off. To cut the buttonhole, you place your needle on the top edge of where it's stitched. Then we get a sharp unpicker. We place it at the base. We guide it through and stay between the zigzags. Be very careful. And then the pin will stop it from going any higher. Done, take the pin out and there's the buttonhole. So I just bought this fabric from Spotlight and um, thanks to Nicole who went to a lot of trouble to help me. Um, this fabric uh, is quite nice. Uh, now, so this is the uh, top of the fabric. This will be the backing. And also, I've got a contrast color going in as a pipe in. So this should look really good. So I'm gonna cut this up now. So the cushion that I bought is a 50 by 50 centimeter cushion. And um, so this needs to have a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So we're gonna make it 53 centimeter by 53 centimeter. And the same for the backing. But the backing will have an overlap so we can get the cushion in. We're gonna make this really basic just to make it quick and easy for the first go. So first I'll start on the backing. Now I've cut the backing at 37 centimetre by 53. I'm making two cushions, and so the backing will be overlapping, so that'll be four pieces. So I'll stitch them together. First I fold it down and ironed five centimetre, then I tucked it in again to two and a half centimetre. So now I'm gonna top stitch. Okay, so I'll let you in on a little secret. The faster you sew, the better it's gonna be. It's more accurate. Okay, so I've got this set at 2.4 on the stitch width. Now you can change that width by just pushing the mode. So here it's 2.4 and you just go either up or down. So zero is gonna be basically stitching on one spot, which is not a good idea. Uh, one will give you a very fine stitch and four is gonna be a wide stitch. So when you're top stitching, most people do use a wider stitch. I prefer not to because uh, it's less chance of that thread getting caught on something and, and then uh, breaking. So I'm gonna keep it on the set 2.4. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is make life a lot easier, make these four pieces into two pieces. And the way I'm gonna do that is overlap the fabric. I'm gonna use a couple of pins. Okay, so we set it exactly on 53. Now there is a cutter on this machine and it's just up here and you can cut off just that way there. So now this piece is 53 centimeters and this is where we're gonna slide the cushion in from this back end here. Okay, so now we just need to sew the top section with the pipe in. Okay, now I'll just change the zipper foot and I'll take the standard foot off and place the zipper foot and I'm gonna place it to the left side. Okay, so before you start, make sure which side the join of the bias binding is on. Uh, so make sure you put the piping on the inside of that. So that's this side here. Okay, you start roughly about halfway. Come in probably about, say, three inches, 75 mil roughly, and just, uh, we'll finish the, it gives you a bit of room to finish it off later a bit easier. Back tack it. So stop about three centimeters from the edge. Now, let's turn it sideways. 
So you snip into the binding, roughly about one and a half centimeters in, and then do either side. That's gonna help you go around that bend a lot easier. Turn it back. We go about two centimeters before the line. Just drop that needle again. Just slowly turn it around. We're gonna ease it around that corner. It's a 90 degree corner. We're gonna make it a little easier. So just a couple of turns manually. I think it's easier. Straighten your binding up. Drop your foot, couple of more turns. That should be close to one and a half centimeter seam allowance. Drop the foot and it's spot on. One and a half centimeter seam allowance. Just make sure the two edges are lined up. So just keep turning them until they're lined up. Get them fairly accurate. You don't want to be off too much. Dressmaking is a very precise art. Okay. So we're approaching another corner. Once again, stop three centimeters before the edge. All right, so we're getting close to the end. This is the tricky bit. Not too hard, just a little bit tricky. Trying to marry the two bindings up. Quite easy to do if you just follow this technique. All right, so I'm gonna basically stop it just, where's that, there, there, yeah, I'm gonna stop it there. So the piping cord need to line up. I'm gonna cut this one because it's a little bit fraying. Okay, get rid of that fray. And then I line the two up. I'm gonna just make it the same length. So I'm just gonna get them to marry up and I'm just gonna butt up to each other. Okay, so that's done. The next stage is to run these fabrics into each other. Now the easy way to do it, I would snip it, this is how I would do it, at one and a half, there's the edge there, hard to see on camera but I would snip it one and a half centimeters in to there, take that one out, and then go another one and a half centimeters to allow the seam allowance. Okay, so you can still see there's an overlap and that's an overlap of three centimeters. So what I'm gonna do now is stitch the two together with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. And it's perfect that's gonna marry in nicely. So what I will do now is just quickly iron that open. All right, so that's closed off. So now I'll just stitch the backing on. So basically now just stitch right around, just hug that piping as tight as possible. Just ease that fabric around as we come around that corner. Okay, so this should be really on a stable table. Uh, you see the machine jumping up and down. Uh, it's not ideal for me, it's okay, but I wouldn't recommend that you uh, use one of these fold out tables for your sewing table. Done. To reduce the bulk, just cut out the corners a little bit. So this is the test to see how well these cushions are gonna fit. First of all, turn it inside out. So any threads you have, just cut them out. Don't want them sticking out. And then you just fit the pillow in. Now this pillow will be tight, purposely so. And there we have it. The Elna 450 did a great job in helping me sew this cushion. It's quite easy to do. Very impressed with it. The piping went in so easily. And Jessica seems to think that it looks like I bought one. And I'm very happy to hear that. Now Jessica has never sewn before. And I think she was pretty natural. But Jessica, what did you think of the machine? Uh, the machine was very easy to use. It has great functions. Um, and I felt really comfortable. Jessica was also asking me about all these different functions on the machine. A lot of these are for embroidery or for zigzags, for 
uh, hemming and a lot of that you'll find in the instruction book and that'll help you. So this machine gets a big thumbs up from me. So now she's free to take it home. So if you're interested in buying one of these machines, but you don't have a local distributor, I will put a link below for Amazon. Now Amazon is an international company and they have a different name for this machine. And they call it the Elna Elnita EC30, but it's the exact same machine. And it works really, really well. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I'd ask if you please consider to subscribe and hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.